Welcome to part two of the toy box build. There's a link in the description to part one. If you haven't watched it, then I suggest you go back and watch that before carrying on here. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel and enjoy. Okay, I don't know how much you can see how dark it is in here because it's, it's raining pretty hard outside, but I've decided I'm gonna basically keep the top bit. I'm, uh, it's only about a centimeter or half a centimeter hanging over the edge when I put it on top of the box. Um, and I think if I try and cut it with a straight line it's only going to make it like slightly wonky and not look as good so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to soften the edges around the edges with the router again and then that will be basically how it, it goes on so i need to router all around these edges inside and outside and i'll just leave the back bit where the hinges go as they are we'll just soften them a bit with the uh, sander so let's do that Okay, so we've got our main box like that, it's pretty straight, and then this lid is going to go on the back like this. So as I said, there's a bit of an overhang here, but I think I think I'm okay with that. So these sides are a little bit higher than I anticipated. Um, but I think I'm okay with that as well. Could potentially put some cushions down so kids can sit on it, uh, as well as it being used as a toy box. And everything else, I'm pretty much good with. So I think we're all good for that to set. We can leave that overnight and then hopefully in the morning the glue will be all done and, and, and ready to go and we can sand and primer it for painting. and and. Uh, yeah, get on with the rest of it. Okay, so I came out last night and did something um, without filming, uh, just because it was a quick little job. So what I did was I just came out and filled the gaps inside, so where we had those pocket holes exposed in on the inside, I've just used some deep fill poly filler. I don't, this is for like cracks in walls and not really wood, I don't think, but I've used it before on this and it does the job. Uh, it fills in and once you've painted over it you can't really tell anyway so it doesn't really matter so these these gaps have now been filled where the screw holes were and I also ran a little bit down this down the bottom here just because there were some fine gaps uh, exposed so what we're going to do now is just I'm just going to sand down all the areas that are over the top basically uh, get rid of all the extra filler and then we can start painting <laughs> So I'm going to start painting the undercoats, I'll probably do two sets of, two coats of primer on this and the lid, um, and before I do uh, the uh, the other base coat, um, or the actual colour that it's going to be. So there's probably people watching thinking that this is not the ideal environment for painting, I mean I've just been working in here, there's dust everywhere, it's not like ideal scenario, but I don't really want to do it in the house. In, in the past, I've done it on my, uh, my my dining room table, but I've literally just built the dining room table and it's just freshly waxed and I don't want to do it in there. So we're going to do it out here. And, you know, as long as I don't start spraying sawdust everywhere, like doing other projects at the same time, I think it should be fine. Like, you know, the, the, the final coat isn't going to be perfect, but I'm just going to try and get as good a finish as I can in the scenario that I have. Yeah, cool. Going to get painting.
So I've done two coats of primer on the base unit and the lid, and I've done two coats of white paint inside. So we had this on the last project where, because this is rounded, it makes it harder to make a, a, a clean white line, or a clean line between the colors of the outside and the white on the inside. Um, so what I've done is I, I do white up to the edges, and then we're gonna do masking tape around the inside, a masking tape line, and then paint from there over to the outside in the color that I've got. Uh, it looked really nice when we did it last time, so I'm just doing it doing it again. So I always get paint from the reduced aisle at B&Q because it's like five pounds for paint. It, it's reduced from like 20 quid and usually they've just been opened and then closed again. This is a full tub and yeah, it was a fiver. It's called Jazzberry. It's like purpley color. Um, so I'm going to masking tape up around the edge and then do a first coat of paint. So now it's all painted, the last thing we're gonna do is do some text on the front that just says toys. We've got these stencils we picked up for like two pounds on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, so we're just gonna find the center, mark up where we want them to go just by pencil, and then paint it on with the white that I used for the inside. So the last thing we need to do on this box is attach the lid. Um, I found these these hinges, these small brass, I guess, hinges. Um, I've got three of them uh, that will go in the middle and the two sides of the back. And also I bought these things to make it so it doesn't slam shut when they close it. I, the last box I made, I got um, different type and they didn't really work as well. They, they worked okay, but they weren't perfect really. So I bought these, hopefully they'll work better. So we'll attach them once we've got that on and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Thanks for watching my full toy box build. Um, please subscribe to the channel and like the videos and tell your friends and stay tuned for, for more builds.